So if your medical school exam is coming up, you know that there's a lot of content to cover in a very short amount of time. So where should your priority be? How do you know you're doing the right thing and putting your energy and focus into what's going to yield you results and actually help you to pass your exam as opposed to you just wasting time? So in this video, I'll go through the framework that has helped me to get through my medical school exams and pass them. And so hopefully that should help you come up with a revision plan for when you're revising for your exams. I'll basically split this video up into three parts. So the first part being learning things and understanding them properly from scratch. Second is consolidating your learning and making sure it stays in your memory. And thirdly is specific exam focused tips that will get you through your exams. So the first thing is learning things for the first time is very important to do well because it builds a foundation of your knowledge. It essentially builds the framework for you to kind of hang on your other bits of knowledge onto. You know, if you think of a tree, you need your branches, you need your roots before you can hang on the leaves. If you're just learning facts by themselves, there's just an overwhelmingly large amount of facts to learn and there's no sort of branches to hang on to, there's no sort of networks in your mind and it will just be a bit repetitive, a bit boring and you won't make sense of the bigger picture and you're more likely to forget it in a much shorter amount of time. Which is fine if your purpose is to just cram for the exam and pass it and then forget that knowledge later down the line. But by actually making frameworks to hold those pieces of information on means that you not only just remember it for your exams, but you remember it for a lot longer because when you're actually practicing and when you're actually on the ward, you'll be able to use that knowledge and remember it more effectively. If you are just trying to cram for your exams and you don't have much time left, I have made another video on how you can cram for your exams. So check that out. However, this video is more about making sure you understand things properly and understand that actually this is going to be a process that's going to take many months. So my first recommendation with, you know, when you're revising for exams is to not just leave it to the last minute, make sure that you give it enough months, I'd say around, you know, at least nine months before your exam, start making a plan, start becoming organized so that that way you're not overwhelmed and get burnt out by having to cram so much content right before your exam, which is not a very effective way of doing things and it will just lead to stress and burnout and lack of motivation and you hate your life. So spacing it out over a period of nine months is a much more healthy and effective way to do things. And so how do you actually go about understanding the knowledge? How do you build that initial framework to hang your knowledge off of? If you have the time, which, you know, as I said, I recommend you to kind of start early and plan this process early, is go through, pick a resource and go through it properly. So for example, if you're learning things for the first time, I really recommend Dr. Najib lectures. So you can pay a one-time payment and just get his uh, membership for life. Or there's also videos on YouTube that he's done. And the thing about it is they are very helpful to understand concepts from scratch if you've never heard of it before because he essentially takes you from not knowing something to understanding something really well. When I was in my second year, I actually learned neuroanatomy using Dr. Najib lectures to a point where I went from not knowing neuroanatomy and not understanding the lectures and becoming overwhelmed to neuroanatomy actually being one of my favorite topics and me understanding it enough to actually share it onto my friends and teach other people as well. So if you're starting out and you need that fundamental solid knowledge, then Dr. Najib lectures is really, really good for that. The only downside of Dr. Najib lectures is that the lectures are very long. So I'd recommend watching them at 1.5 to two times speed. And you know, they could be a bit more concise because he does repeat himself a lot, but by repeating himself, he makes sure to solidify and consolidate that information into your mind. So it's very, very good, but it does require a large time investment, which is why I say, you know, make sure to plan in advance several months if you're taking this study plan into action. Another resource I really recommend for wanting to understand things properly is Pathoma. So the doctor that explains Pathoma is a lot more concise than Dr. Najib, and he does a very good job explaining, you know, some complicated details or pathophysiology of certain diseases in a way that actually you make sense, you know? When I was watching his videos, I had a lot of revelations. I was like, oh wow, this actually makes sense. 
And when you go from not just memorizing things for the sake of it, but because you've actually understood what's going on, it's a lot more rewarding and it also helps to kind of stick that concepts in your mind a lot more clearly. So for example, I remember just not understanding, you know, what jaundice is, the different types, what even is bilirubin, like what even is the liver. And then I went from just not understanding and being so confused to actually going, oh, okay, this makes sense. And I thought I would never understand it in my life. And it's just something that I'd have to memorize. But having watched that lecture was a time worth investing because it makes a lot more sense and it's a lot clearer in my mind. So Pathoma for understanding things. And you don't have to watch everything. I haven't watched all of Pathoma. It's just concepts that I struggle with. I'll go on you know, the Pathoma folder and I'll type that in in my search. And if he's made a video on it, then I would use that video to actually increase my understanding and make sure I fill the gaps in my knowledge. If you're studying for UK finals, you'll find that Pathoma is an American resource more geared towards the USMLE. However, since it covers, you know, basic science concepts and pathophysiology, it doesn't matter that it's an American resource because the concepts are essentially the same. So while, you know, management guidelines and things would differ from America to UK, for understanding the core fundamentals of a disease process, it really doesn't matter that you're use, using, you know, a resource that's not from the UK. Now, the second step is actually consolidating the information that you've learned. This is where I actually recommend that if you're studying for a UK finals, then you use a UK specific resource because your management options will be based on NICE guidelines and the UK guidelines, which might differ from the American or somewhere else system. So for this, I recommend question banks. Two good ones are PassMed and QuizMed. Now, if you've heard of these and you're wondering, okay, which one should I use? Which one's better? I've actually made a video comparing both PassMed and QuizMed. So check that out if you haven't already. But just to give you a glimpse, I'd say PassMed is good for learning the content for the first time and QuizMed is good for actually consolidating your knowledge because the questions are a lot harder than PassMed and requires a bit more two-step thinking. But if you're struggling to choose between the question banks, I'd say just buy both. Check that video out if you want to learn more about, you know, the differences and similarities between those two question banks. And so questions are a good way to consolidate your learning because it promotes the active recall, it promotes your thinking rather than it being a passive way of actually learning. And what some concepts that are more common will be repeated more and more again. So again, it builds in not just the active recall, but also the spaced repetition aspect, which are two key elements of learning effectively. And if you're a bit confused and you don't know what active recall space repetition are, then I've made videos explaining that too. So make sure to check that out. The second way I'd say to consolidate your learning is to do your Anki reviews. Do them every single day without fail. Make it a daily integral part of your practice while you're studying for exams. I made sure to do Anki every single day without fail. I've done Anki for more than a year. I've made my video on my experiences of doing Anki for more than a year every single day and how effective that has been, TLDR, do it, it's very worth it. Anki provides the single most highest return on your investment when you're studying compared to any other method you can ever think of. So if you're new to Anki and just are not using it for your revision, well, you're kind of missing out. But luckily for you, I've made an entire playlist on how I use Anki in medical school. So if you're new then and you're interested, then make sure to definitely, definitely check that playlist out because it will it's a complete game changer since I discovered Anki, it's been a game changer for my studies in medical school and is the single most important thing I think that has helped me to pass my exams. Anki is free and I cannot rave about it enough and if you've gone to my channel you see like half of my videos are about it so there must be a reason why I rave about it and it's free did I mention and my video on playlists on how to use Anki and everything you need to know including the settings and everything are all free, are all on here. Make sure to check that out. You will be doing yourself a disservice if you're not using Anki in medical school or for any other exam that you're revising for that matter. You know, I don't use Anki at the moment currently because I've finished medical school, but if I take membership exams and other exams that 
I would need to take in the future, then I would definitely, definitely be going back to Anki. Okay, let me move on from going and talking about how good Anki is and move on to my next point, which is now that you've learned the knowledge and you've consolidated the knowledge, what do you actually do to revise for that exam? Because exam specific revision is a lot different to just learning itself. Because when it comes to exam, you also need a technique of being able to answer questions properly. So in our medical school, we have single best answer questions, which are essentially multiple choice questions, which require to think and pick the best answer from a list of options. And so the best thing you can do is use previous questions that have come up because that way it will give you a framework of how your medical school develops the questions and what kind of content you need to know or that your medical school expects you to know. Because it's all well and good doing, you know, questions and learning and using question banks and resources but different medical schools test people in different ways so knowing how your medical school tests you is very 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 important so in our medical school we have this online resource where previous questions have been uploaded by students in the past and so you know there's pdfs of hundreds of questions that have come up in the past and so going through those questions and making sure you know what your medical school likes to test you on is a very very most effective way of spending your time well because it sets that stage for how difficult the questions your medical school sets are and it gives you the list of topics you need to learn. The other thing I'd say is go to revision tutorials that are hosted by your medical society. These will have talks from students that have sat your exams in the past so they'll be talking from first-hand experience as to what type of questions come up, what to learn, how to tailor your revision, you can ask them what resources they use. It's a lot lot more effective and sometimes even a lot better than attending lectures from you know senior doctors and consultants because while their knowledge will be obviously a lot lot better in that particular field they're so far away from having done their medical school exams that they may not be the best person to ask about what type of questions come up in the exam and so actually the best resources are learning from students who have sat those exams in the past that you can actually learn what your medical school likes to test you on. So that's been my whistle stop tour of how to revise for your exams in medical school. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, then make sure to hit the thumbs up button if you're new, subscribe to my channel. With that being said, thank you for watching and I'll catch you again in my next video.